in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh, no. Hey everybody, welcome back to an awesome spotlight on here at AfterBuzz TV. I'm your host Alexis Torres and I have the most amazing person that I've been wanting to interview for a really long time. She's been in the business for oof, like 20 years. She's done almost like a hundred different types of TV and film production. She's a stunt coordinator. She's a beautiful actress. And I, ladies and gentlemen, Spice Williams, Crosby. Oh, thank you so much, Alexis. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> well, you know, I was only in the business 20 years, and maybe, uh, no, maybe you're over still, 35 You're years. still going, though, and oh, yeah, I'm so, it is. I'm I so proud of you. Oh, wow, that takes me back a few years. <laughs> oh, maybe. no, I, I did some research. <laughs> we're gonna bring We're going to bring back some stuff, but definitely I want to talk about just your whole career in general. Okay. Like, that's, you've done, oh, yeah, like I said, over almost a hundred different types of productions. You're still doing production now for yourself and for other things. Is there is there anything that you can take from what you're doing now uh, that's just one of your favorite favorite moments from either being on a movie or something with your family or anything that you've worked with that has to do with film? I think uh, probably a life-changing moment was when I did uh, Star Trek V. Yeah, the final I was, frontier. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> so I'm um, glad you did. <laughs> first of all, I am a Trekkie, and uh, I got to read for not William Shatner, but Captain Kirk, so yeah. he's still my heart. And I almost turned the role down because they said I had to be a Klingon. I was like, oh, Klingons, they hate Captain Kirk. Yeah. And my agent said, shut up. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, At least give him some room. Come so, on. <laughs> but I um. I, st I studied, studied, and practiced that role, and uh, went in five times for callbacks. Really? I mean, you get to a certain point where it's like, oh, man, they shoot horses, don't they? Just slit my wrist. I can't <laughs> take it anymore. And then I walked in a room with 13 gorgeous women, like Kim Cattrall was one of them. And, um, wow, I we didn't even know that. we were all looking at each other like, oh, good luck, good luck, bitch. Right? You know? <laughs> I hope you die. <laughs> and... Um, Anyway, I got to read, and William Shatner said, I'd love to redirect you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he goes, but I can't think of any way to make it better. And I'm like, huh. I was so starstruck and awestruck over... Like, hey, when you're a Trekkie, you know how it is. You're no. a fan. I'm a fan. Girl. Yeah, no, if I ever met Shatner, I think I would actually just die. Like, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> that'd be it. it. <laughs> and I'm a fangirl on sci-fi, gore horror, and cowboys, so I admit it, I'm a nerd. And um, We're all nerds here. <laughs> so I was so excited to get that, but and I had the script, and I learned all the lines, but then I was told... You know, you have to learn it in Klingonese. And I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. And then I looked at Klingonese and I was like, ah! I ran home, threw myself on the bed crying, and my agent came in, what's wrong with you? And I said, look at what they're going to make me do this in. And she was like, wow, I don't think we asked for enough money on this one. <laughs> so then I went, okay, it's one day at a time, you know, the 12 step program. Right. And, um, I practiced, practiced every day. The repeat button on my cassette recorder broke. And then the guy that I worked with, Todd Bryant for Captain Claw, uh -huh. um, you can always get an actor over your house if you promise him lunch. So, I was going to say, I was like, was there food involved? Yeah, there was food involved. <laughs> so I'd say, come on over, we'll uh, eat lunch, and we'll do our lines. And for three months, three times a week. Wow. Uh, me every day, but with Todd coming over. Yeah. And we practiced and practiced and practiced. And then I had Mark Okren, who made the language, fly in from uh, Washington, D.C., and he wow. literally put his hands in my mouth, putting Dude. my tongue where, how to say, what food, not hang on. Yeah. And I was spitting all over the place, and he says, that's good, that's good. If you're spitting, you're good. And so... <laughs> so it's a weird thing to say. It, it, it really, by the time Todd and I got done... Analyzing the character, like, whoa, okay, what, what kind of toothpaste would Klingons use? And we went, they don't brush their teeth. No, I was okay, say good. Yeah. <laughs> and we literally needed to make what they created, just these words on a paper, mm -hmm. 
and what Klingons are supposed to be, barbaric, but we wanted to put a heart and soul and intention and and uh, and and breathe life into these characters yeah, and, and, and and put a backstory that we were, you know, sexually involved, mm -hmm. intimate, and the only way I could rule the universe would be vicariously through him because of course in the Klingon society they look down on women yeah. as you know, we're always yeah. you know that one. We'll, we'll get we'll get into that yeah. later. <laughs> so we threw that in. But up until the very moment, uh, scared to death to do this because it had never been done and Bill Shatner was running three days late. He <laughs> said, um, oh dear. came up to us and said, y you have to do this right or they're going to can it. Wow. And I mean, there was a lot of tension on the set and there's a lot of things going on and knowing that we don't have four hours in this interview, I'll cut it short. <laughs> but, uh, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> when they finally set us all up and I got the clothes on and yeah. six hours of makeup and I literally transformed. I felt like a Klingon. You looked and like we, one. It looked great. And we great. went in, and on action, it was... And and the whole scene began, and Todd and I were talking back and forth, and we were real Klingons. And then when it cut, it was silent. And then William Shatner said... That was brilliant! Oh my God! That was it. Everybody stood up and applauded, oh. and, and he said that was so amazing. But I don't know what the hell you said. <laughs> you got to do it in English. And Todd and I had forgotten the English because we had be transformed ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the lesson that I learned was: no matter how frightened you are about a goal, mm -hmm. you just got to take it one day at a time, and and you put your work into it, mm -hmm. and you put your heart and soul into it, and. Uh, and you do your homework. That's it. You just do your homework. And it literally came to the point where we were written in the book that we saved the movie because we put them back on track mm -hmm. three days ahead of schedule. And we were given like some of the best reviews in that movie. So that movie, what I learned in that lesson, I've been able to translate for every single um difficult moment in my life where I'm like, oh, God, I can't do that. And I go, okay, wait, I've done something like this before. I'm just going to do it one day at a time. And and I usually bring myself to the point where, well, okay, I got this. I got this. I just, I don't even need my questions anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you just answered everything I wanted to talk about. <laughs> No, it's okay. No, I that film for me, even though yes, it was it was a long time ago. I remember seeing you actually everybody in that cast and just seeing that it felt like it was real. Yeah. So that's why I really wanted to talk about that because I felt like it, it's it's a character that I don't know many people who can say I played that role and I I was I was a Klingon and it was awesome and and I trained my body I got down to 6% body fat and I built I told William what? Shatner I said I'm going to give you special effects that special effects can't give you <laughs> because you know the Klingons always had hairy arms mm -hmm. and that's why they're looking for bodybuilders they wanted Rachel McLeish she actually turned the role down and then they went on this massive hunt for like 2000 women so the fact that I got it you know you look at like yes I did my homework but I guess the universe the stars all lined right. up and it was meant to be mine to do something with mm -hmm. and um, so I told Bill I said look I'm gonna you know build my arms up 13 inches I'm gonna cut my waist down to 21 I want to make this V shape and I'm gonna design this body for you yeah. well I only got my waist down to 23 and then they made my costume for a 21 so it took three women to squeeze me into oh it my gosh. so he was kind of pissed that we showed up late on set because it took three women I they said you gotta let all your air out you're not gonna be able to breathe and I mean you're you can't breathe and I said that's perfect for my character yeah it makes Just, sense ah, you know that <laughs> You got these cards. It just adds to the anger, I tell you. Yeah, um, I tell you. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what the main thing that I want to talk about was that. But I also, you know, I did know about your history about a bodybuilder. But I didn't, I always wanted to know, how did you even get into that, personally? Well, um, that's kind of an interesting question because... Um, well, I grew up on a ranch, and uh, I was always kind of athletic, mm -hmm. but I went through a real difficult childhood with, like, five suicides, including my dad. Oh, my word. And then my twin sister and I were kidnapped and locked in a house for six hours, and I was molested again several times and gang-raped at 
17 and date raped and I died in a car accident oh when I was word. 18 and they put me on drugs and then I went on the road as a musician, entertainer. I do remember that. You had and your own band at one I did, point. Sugar and Spice. Yeah. Oh. And so with all the medicinal drugs, they turned recreational drugs. Mm -mm. And by the time I was 26, I had three drug and alcohol overdoses. Um, yeah. And then I, when I was in that car accident and died on the operating table, I actually went to the light and was told, you're not going to die. You got something important to do. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, when you're on the other side, there's no trauma. Yeah. You're just, okay, cool. So I, um, here I am at September 19th, 1977, crawling out of a comatose bed into the kitchen, pulling myself up on the stove, looking up into the air vent where I knew God lived at that moment. <laughs> and I said, what were you trying to tell me in the light? Okay, here's the deal. You help me turn my life around, I swear I'll be an image that changes the world. Yeah. And at that moment, I went cold turkey. No drugs, no smoking, no smoking. Um, anything. Eating, yeah, anything, anything. All the stuff that goes with that. Right. And I had to detox, clean out. And uh, my body was out of shape, you know. And I got fat, and, and I, I said, I got to get off the road. And mm -hmm. so when I got off the road, I was signed with a record company at the time. It was 20th Century Records. And I needed extra money, so I went, well, I'm going to see if I can teach aerobics in a gym. All right. So I started teaching aerobics. Okay. And they had these funny little machines, like the Jack LaLanne machines. Oh, you gosh. Know, like you could do yes. This and, <laughs> and this and all this stuff. And I, I went, wow, I think, I think I can work with these. And little by little, I started transforming my body. And then someone came in and, and took some pictures of me. Yeah, that's not creepy. And, <laughs> well, it was a guy from a fitness thing, uh -huh. and yeah. and then that's I, what they all say. Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I fall for it all the time. But he, um, I actually at the time, I got an audition. Mm -hmm. uh, a casting director said, uh, "Are you a bodybuilder?" And I said, oh, "I'm trying to learn how to be one." Okay. And she said, "Well, we have a movie of the week called Getting Physical." And I remember seeing could, something about that. <laughs> if you want to come in and audition, yeah. I'll give you about three months' notice. Wow. So I, I just stole everything. And Arnold Schwarzenegger would come in, and, and I'd see Stallone. I started stealing everything. I'd be watching these guys. Oh, he's doing that. I'll do that, too. <laughs> and I went in, and I got the, the job. And then all of a sudden, the magazine started hitting. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it, but as I detoxed, cleaned up my diet, changed my lifestyle from making that commitment, right. I had turned into a vegan. Yeah. I didn't even know what that word was. Someone <laughs> accused me of it. I said, I am not. I don't even know what a vegan is. <laughs> and then they said, well, do you eat animals? I'm like, oh, apparently not. I guess I don't. Uh, do you eat dairy? No. I'm a vegan? How do you spell that? <laughs> so, spell that? so I suddenly wound up on like all these vegetarian magazines posing and doing bodybuilding poses mm -hmm. and as a result it wasn't just that I was asked to guest pose and stuff and yeah I don't know somewhere <clears throat> along the line I've been in over a hundred magazines I and know most of them were fitness and and then I was squatting 315 pounds and oh benching 235 pounds God. all drug free and animal free so uh, so that was newsworthy. <laughs> I mean, no, but I feel, I know from reading and talking to fans from, you know, who Trekkie fans and things like that, especially with women, they've always looked up to you. You know, especially since you started doing the fitness and and, you know, transforming your body. It's it's a great thing and I I've always admired your story except I didn't know other little details about that. So that was new for me. But I I admire where that you came from a dark place yeah. and then came into the light and now you're this face for for other women who need to get out of that dark place and move I, on. I, I, I appreciate I got goosebumps when you yeah. said that. I got goosies. Um, <laughs> you can look back, you know, when you're in your darkest times, you have to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Of course. And when I was in my darkest times, I because I made that commitment, like, all right, God, here's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> And my word has always been my word, so I'm like, damn, now i got to stick to this commitment. But <clears throat> when you're in your darkest times, if you connect every day with your higher source, mm -hmm. in, in times of great need, miracles will be performed. Yeah. And for me, when I look back, 
I mean, 1977, what was that, 30 something years ago? Um, I see yeah. the journey how it went up, down, up, down, but it kept going up. And I, you know, we have this road, this journey that we take. And mm -hmm. sometimes we take a right turn or a left turn. Mm -hmm. But if you always know where your source is, you do come back to the source and <clears throat> you stay committed. Because from there, I got into acting. Mm -hmm. And I was the only actress with muscles, so I played a lot of witches, bitches, whores, alien <laughs> creatures, biker bras, zombies. But you do zombies. them so well. <laughs> it's been a living. <laughs> and, uh, and then stunts came yeah. along because I didn't want to wait on tables as an actress, so I became a wrestler. And I worked like with you. Like you do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a natural segue. <laughs> which is actually a very interesting question that I was wondering, because I didn't know which came first. Was it acting or stunt coordinating? And how do you even get into that? I mean, I know that you were muscly, so it kind of makes sense to either go into something that's a little but not the word violent, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but I've always wanted to know, like, how did you go? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna try it, see how it is, and then just make a career out of it. You know, everything that I've become, I never actually went for. Yeah. Maybe acting. I don't know. Um, but I was hired as an actress on Fall Guy. I remember that. Because they were looking for an actress who could wrestle. Yeah. And then there was a Mickey Gilbert, who was a stunt coordinator, who's just, you know, I bowed to Mickey. <laughs> and then the other guy that was brought in was a famous, world-renowned Judo Jean LaBelle. And Judo Jean LaBelle, um, Google him, trust me. He's I was going to say, I was like, that sounds familiar. The toughest man in the world <laughs> and the, the greatest Judo champion in the world. Wow. And he also is a wrestler. His mother used to own the Olympic Auditorium down in L.A. Wow. And um, anyway, he was doing the fight coordinating on the wrestling. Mm -hmm. And he, I, in order for me to learn this, I went to Mildred Burke, a world-renowned mm -hmm. Wrestler, yeah. and so when I got into the ring with Gene LaBelle, he was like, "Ah, he's a rough guy. Yeah, you don't do it that way. You do it this way." And I'm like, "Well, I learned from Mildred Burke." And he goes, "Well, you're doing it my way." <laughs> and we just butted heads the whole show, and I'm like, "This guy's a jerk." This guy. <laughs> and at the end of the show, he came up to me because he'd go like. Can you take it over the rope? The director wants to see you take it over the rope. And I said, well, I'm not sure. He'd grab me, throw me over the rope. Yeah, she can take it over the rope. Oh, I mean, he's crazy. So he came up to me and he goes, you know what? You'd make a damn good stunt girl. I said, well, excuse me, I'm an actress. Oh, oh he my. Goes, well, I can't even see you doing that. That's so funny. So he said, well, while you're starving to death being an actress, you want to make some money as a stunt girl? There you go. I said, well, what do I have to do? And he goes, keep your mouth shut. Wow. And do what I say. I'm like, well, that's a stunt right there. <laughs> anyway, he mentored me 1980. It's 1979, 1980. Mm -hmm. He mentored me and got me into motorcycles, stair falls, high falls, fighting, judo, everything. And then, boom, before I knew it, I'm a martial artist with three black belts, fighting guys. Um, and eventually... Um, I have a third dan in Arju Kempo. That's five combatant styles. A first dan in Escrima, mm -hmm. which is Kokoi, Kanyetes, Dosi Paris in right. Cebu, Philippines. Yep. Then I have um, Level B in Israeli Kapab, granted by the Ministry of Education in Israel. Mm -hmm. And I'm a brown belt in Hawaiian Kempo. And then I kind of watered it all down to create my own style, because I say I speak vagina. <laughs> Apparently, no man has been able to learn how to translate That's that so language. Funny. <laughs> but I do teach women. Uh, my partner Jennifer Silverstein, who's awesome, she spent two years in the Israeli army. Wow! And um, with my knowledge, her knowledge, we've literally pulled together our own style of teaching, mm -hmm. uh, fighting, and so. And and I now and then fight coordinating because all of a sudden I was asked, fifteen years ago, could I maybe longer than that, could I oversee some... See, I was on Days of Our Lives for 17 years. I remember that. Doubling Deidre Hall and the yeah. stunt coordinator, Mike Adams, may rest in peace. I love you, Mikey. Yeah. Um, asked me, uh, he couldn't make it, could you oversee some of these okay. fights? And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And before I knew it, I was fight coordinating. To, I was being asked to do uh, fight coordinating where women were involved because mm -hmm. women's like, well, I, if I'm going to be raped, can I have a female stunt coordinator? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then, you know, so I so before I knew it, I was doing these movies, working with Navy. I just got off a movie I'm so proud of with Navy SEALs. Wow. And it's a true story about the, how these Navy SEALs come back from you know the war, mm -hmm. and all they do is get 
five minute psychiatric care and they're drugged with oh, every kind no. of drug. They're doing heroin, they're doing antidepressants, they're becoming zombies and committing suicide. And this guy comes back, he gets teamed up with his nephew who's in trouble in school, mm -hmm. and they go on this road trip and how they turn their lives around. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, about four or five altercations that take place. And I literally, and this guy who's starring in it, mm -hmm. Jason Cabell, is an actual former Navy SEAL. Wow. And he invited his other Navy SEALs to come in and play certain roles. So I had to put knife fights together, certain fight scenes together. And um, it was really uh, such an honor to work with Navy SEALs yeah, that that's, have been in 70 countries and that's insane. seen a lot of yeah, no. chaos. Yeah, you know? I hear you. And, uh, but I know that, but they, um, they're really good at guns, but there's some hand to hand combat, especially for movies and things yeah. that I had to like really work with them on and they were like wow okay so how do you do this guys and how do you do I mean that's like, so cool it was it's such a great honor so um so that's where that's taken me I didn't plan it I just no. the universe found me and um as I did my due diligent work right trying to fix me somehow along the line what I fixed started perpetuating my career and I think that's great, especially since, um, if we're allowed to talk about it, um, that you actually even got to do a little bit of stunt work in the new Terminator that's coming out. Oh, I did. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So um, I guess um, Joel Kramer, who I absolutely adore, he's Uncle Joel in our house. Nice. Um, called me up and said, um, you want to play a soldier? And I'm like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So he pulled me out, and uh, we're with uh, doing pickup shots and some CGI stuff, and it was so cool because he showed me there are like twelve different stunt guys there. Oh my word! And he goes, "Look, these are some of the biggest and best stunt oh, coordinators in go. the business. I want to see you take it higher, faster, and harder than any of these guys. I want you to make them look like pussies." <laughs> I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and so when it came time, the shooting and going up and mm -hmm. was called a home alone. You just kick your legs up and fall flat. Wow. I was so amped. <laughs> I think I got up about four feet. What? And when you land right, it feels good. So when you land wrong, it, it don't feel so good. No, but when imagine. you land right, it feels good. And so I was just like, and we had to blow ourselves up with squibs and things like that. Yeah. Little things. So you're like, bap, 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 prrr, and then... And wow. then I just had, I was looking up and there's Uncle Joel going, You okay? <laughs> I said, Yeah, I'm fine. He goes, No, really? Are you okay? <laughs> I said, Yeah, I'm okay. What's wrong? And he goes, That was pretty high. I go, Well, good. That's what you asked me to do. <laughs> we did it like six more times. He goes, Are you sure you're okay? I go, Get away from me. I'm fine. So he called Kind of made a good movie for you. Gosh. <laughs> I was, he that's called so me funny. the next day. He said he was really proud of me. So, I mean, I, I, I think that's cool. And, um, I, I mean, I'm an actress at heart. That's. Uh, I just finished on this. I also, when I fight coordinated this mm -hmm. movie, it's called Smoke Filled Lungs. I think I saw something like that's coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, we just finished it, so yeah. we'll be out. I don't know when they're going to edit it. They're, they're <laughs> on a mass move because they okay. want to get it out. But um, I also had a part. I played a, a, a high school principal. Oh, was, I can totally see that. that. Was, <laughs> so I'm not going to expel you, but I am definitely going to suspend you, young man. Nice. So one of those. <laughs> and uh, so, but acting is um, my first love. It's really my first love. What about your, well, wait, is your husband your second love or is oh, Mark that? Morris? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, my husband, Gregory Crosby, yes. He, Which yeah. is awesome because he's the grandson. He of, is the firstborn grandson to Bing Crosby. Yeah. And grew up with the likes of Gary Cooper and, um, oh my God, Rosemary Clooney and Bob Hope and um, so Dean crazy. Martin and, uh, the, uh, please, all of the Rat yeah. Pack. He yeah. hung out with the Rat Pack. Yeah, and I, I, I wish we had more time to talk about it, but we love you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I love you. And he's got a major film, Hacksaw yes. Ridge, mm -hmm. directed by Mel Gibson, starring Andrew Garfield. So yeah. and that's been a 15-year quest. No uh, way. 15 years that Gregory wrote and uh, started 
the whole journey 15 years ago when he met Desmond T. Doss, our only Medal of Honor winner that won our country's highest honor during World War II without carrying a gun, saved 75 oh men's lives on a 400-foot cliff in Okinawa, an impossible situation where 200 men were mowed down by 17 Japanese men, and as this little skinny guy, who was a vegetarian, <laughs> ran and hoisted these 200-pound guys up, ran them to the edge of a cliff, wrapped a rope around his waist in a tree stump, and shimmied 75 men down to save their lives. And these are the same men that broke his nose, knocked his teeth out, and called him a coward because he refused to touch a gun. Wow. It's going to be, uh, Mel Gibson thinks it's going to be his Academy Award comeback. It sounds like it is. It's it, great. Well, this year we had American Sniper. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. A man that had a gun. Yeah, and then and we had um, Broken also. I don't know if he had a gun in that one. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I don't that's know. a different. But that's a diff next year we'll have a Academy Award with a man without a gun. There you go. <laughs> but he believed I shall not kill, so they made him a medic. Oh, that's great. And, uh, I'm so excited for that. I definitely might have to bring you back for that one and oh, maybe even bring Greg with you. Yeah, there you go. I, yeah, there I think I'm going to like that one. Um, mm. But I do want to also talk about, since we were talking about stunt coordinating and martial arts, that mm. you do have uh, a kind of like a movement that, and also a TV show that's coming out called I, I Fight for My Life. I did. I created I Fight for My Life. Mm -hmm. um, you can see my T-shirt. Yeah, it's awesome. And um, it is, uh, and you can find me on ifightformylife.com. I was about to say that, but <laughs> please, please tell me more. I take women who have been raped, stabbed, shot, beaten. Mm -hmm. I reenact their story with my stunt actors. Mm -hmm. And then I teach them my style of fighting. They only get three hours. And really? then the very next day, they come into a, a dark arena with my specially hand-picked martial artist mm -hmm. that walk around in this arena, and that woman's in the middle, center light, mm -hmm. and one at a time, they come out and attack her. Wow. And she has to use the skills that she learned to fight for her life, something she didn't do the first time she was yeah. know, being attacked. Mm -hmm. And it rewires the PTSD. You can go to therapy. Drugs do not work. Mm -hmm. All antidepressants and anti-anxieties, none of those are going to stop and rewire. Mm -hmm. uh, Therapy is really good. I, go to your church, go to your therapist, go to your rabbi, do all that stuff. But you're always feeling like a victim mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. you can make a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. So what this does is it puts you into another fierce zone, mm -hmm. only this time you have skills to fight back, and it rewires that PTSD where you feel like a victor and we've had amazing success and I just got a contract from a production company that wants to market it Yay. and we're really excited and with that goes our little yes I don't know you guys need to go to uh, ifightformylife.com and get these I actually have one of these on my keys which I might need to get another one because it's a little dull but uh, <laughs> if you could tell our well, awesome yeah go for it and it's it's plastic it's 100% legal because it's nothing more than a keychain yeah and it holds your keys, and it fits real good in your pants if you need to pull it out. But when you're leaving a place of safety and going to your car, you're not in the safe zone anymore. Mm -hmm. And every two minutes a woman's raped in this country. Yeah. Every day a thousand women are sexually and physically assaulted and murdered. Mm -hmm. um, every week a transgender is murdered. Wow. Um, 200,000 children are kidnapped every year for sex uh, trafficking. Mm -hmm. We And these are just reported numbers. Yeah. Trust me. So it's not safe out there, but... This is just, it holds your keys, but it is an item of opportunity to help you make space yeah. in the event of an attack. You can use the keys, you can light up the nerve endings, mm -hmm. and I've gone through the federal building, I've gone through customs, I've gone all yeah. over, because it's plastic. Yeah. It doesn't scan. Yeah, it's true. Um, and it's, you're not going to kill anyone with this. Nope. Well, maybe I would. You would. <laughs> you probably I would. I could, but it'd be too much work, no, to tell no. you the truth. And you I have can... to get someone down and really punch them in the throat. It's, yeah. This is not for that. This is just to make space enough time to save your life. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Kitty Cat Key Guard, but I have them in pink and black. Yeah, which I have right here. But I'm also now making a little doggy and a horsey. Ah. And they'll have Winnie the Pooh colors, like a purple oh, horsey and a blue adorable. doggy. Because I want them to look like a friendly toy. Yeah, of course. And, and I also want the predator, when the predator's done his homework, and he's like, oh, that girl's on her cell phone. She's totally unaware. Yeah. I want the woman to have this in her hand, looking at the predator, going, yeah, bring it on. Yeah. You know, don't touch me, because I'm going to fight for my life. So I'm trying, the, my movement is A, to educate women. Of course. 
and and men too, but right now I'm starting with women. Mm-hmm. Uh, make them aware. Prevent. Don't walk down the dark alley and don't get in that guy's car. <laughs> I'm just going to go and right on over there. <laughs> and don't drink the drink he's handing you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want them to be prepared with skills, which I do have a free class every Thursday night mm-hmm. at the House of Champions in Van Nuys. You can go to houseofchampions.com. Mm-hmm. And Jennifer Silverstein and myself teach women an hour and a half class Everything from chokes, grabs, gun disarms, knife disarms, um, how, a, how a man would attack a woman. Of course. Um, there are a lot of classes we've taken on how men attack men, mm-hmm. but how a man attacks a woman, his thought process, uh, the devi- deviousness mm-hmm. of a predator, yeah. and to be able to empower women to take their power back and, and know they have a right to fight for their life. Right. So what time is that at on Thursdays? Um, 6.15 okay. at the House of Champions. Yeah. And uh, it's free. Yeah, there. See, guys, it's free. It's you can't. Free. You can't get anything better than free. Yeah, but yes, okay. I have one of these on my keys. I've. I haven't used one yet, but I definitely every time I leave the house, work, or anything like that, the first thing that goes in between my hands when I there leave you go. is one of these, and it makes me just feel just a little bit more safe. And what's so cool is, look, we can still shake hands. Yeah, with look, it on. With it on, yeah. you can pick up your groceries. I can. Well, and because yours is getting dull because you yeah. keep hitting your friends with it, right? Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> friends are starting to get a little annoyed because I'm just like, hey, poke, poke. <laughs> then you can have those. Yay! Yay! So definitely one of those things, and I love them, and you should definitely check it out. ifightformylife.com or House of Champions. You can check it out Thursday nights, 6.15 p.m. You can look yes, for you can't You can't miss her. She's this tall, redhead, beautiful and awesome, Aww. standing there ready to show you how to kick butt. <laughs> but uh, is there anything else before we go that I I think because I've taken so much from your whole your whole life and everything that you've told me today and in the past since you know we've known each other for a while that yes. it, I I've always feel insp- inspired when I'm around you. Oh, so do you have you. any advice? Maybe not for someone who's obviously has to go through I fight for my life, but just acting or career or anything like that for women, men, children, teenagers, whatever that you would think that is good advice for people who want to do better in their life, whether it's, you know, career-wise or not? Well, wow, that's such a simple question. That's a lot, yeah. (laughs) Well, let me think. Um, First of all, not too long ago, well, yeah, too long ago, but I mean, I acquired uh, two masters and a PhD, so I'm a doctor. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. Of holistic nutrition, and uh, it's never too late to get educated. That's a good one. You know, and uh, the thing is that you can do whatever you want. I remember my parents telling me, Pick one thing yeah. and just do it. Get married, have kids, and do your job. And I'm like, yeah, but I kind of want to be a doctor, then I want to be an actress, and I want to be a stunt woman, then I want to be a producer, and I want to I want to do that. It, it, every time, I'm a project-oriented person. Right. And I don't think that we have to be in a cookie-cutting type of existence. Um we have that problem. Um, I was watching the Bruce Jenner interview yeah. the other night, mm-hmm. of which just my heart goes out to him. And, and people have a hard time because, like, whoa, either you're straight or you're gay or you're a man or you're a woman. Mm-hmm. No, there is, really, we're human beings, and there's stuff in between. And we can't keep labeling ourselves anymore. Mm-hmm. I think that if there's anything inside of you, that you have a passion for. Passion is so important. And that's why I probably drive people nuts because they're like, <laughs> God, Spice, you're all over the place. And I'm like, I know, I'm just passionate. <laughs> but if you have a passion for, get educated, find a way to do it, make your, make your life happy. It's, it's the power of the universe is within you. Yeah. Really, you, you can make a good day, you can make a bad day. Mm-hmm. You make a bad day, it's on you, brother. Yeah. But you make a good day, you touch so many people's lives. So I really feel that uh, we're all spiritually connected. Um, but the most important thing is, you know, find your passion and make yourself happy. And what Desmond T. Doss told Gregory, that if you connect with your God, your universe, mm-hmm your higher source, every single day, that in times of great need, miracles will happen. And so I think it's on us that live in this envelope of flesh to find a way every day to find a way to connect. For me, I run, Mm -hmm. I work out, I I try and help people, I'm an activist, but there's a moment within my life every day where I try and connect with this high vibrational frequency in hopes that I can do some good. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Oh, I have like 
chills and tingles no. all over my body. I love you so much. Oh so again, where can anybody find you for I Fight For My Life or or anything just to even just talk to you or yeah, anything yeah. like that? First of all, I'm all over Facebook. <laughs> she is. God. I hate Twitter. I hate LinkedIn. I hate all those things, but I'm on them. Um, I'm all over Facebook. Spice Williams Crosby. Mm -hmm. I have my I Fight For My Life and mm -hmm. I have my Spice of Life Health Q and A. Those are my three Facebook pages. Awesome. For and then of course you can find my ifightformylife.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. And I also have a website, spicewilliamscrosby.com. dot com. Oh, well you can find me in health for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way not to find me. Just Google me. Oh, um, man. Well, you heard it from her first. <laughs> but don't come to my house. <laughs> well, no, we won't do that. No. <laughs> but uh, I can still come, though, right? Yes, yeah, you okay, can. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. And you're you welcome. can find me all over the interwebs as Alexis Torres. You can find me at A Torres 890 You can find me here at AfterBuzz TV doing more things like this. And also at our sister network, BlackHollywoodLive.com for Geek Nerd Tech. I also might be giving away one of these guys Ooh. if you follow me and retweet this video out and or if you even just maybe buy one for yourself maybe I don't know so uh, thank you again so oh, much for you, coming Alexis. in thank you I've had a blast I love you yeah I love you too and I love chatting with you well yeah we chat all the time though I know. I know, but this was fun and different yeah I liked it and thank you guys again for coming to watch it again this is after buzz TV spotlight on and I'll see you guys next time bye cool <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. So I'm good. Sir Richard That's Wentworth, hard. and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Yeah, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.